Alright, what's going on everyone? My name is Cameron, welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be looking at some more towery development. Um, today we're going to be actually, as you can tell by the title of the video, uh, looking into how to open a file and read it. Um, so we'll be looking for the first time at taking advantage of the uh, the JavaScript package that Towery uh, provides to us, as well as a little bit of the cool security features that they offer, and then also um, actually how we can put all those things into into uh, into effect and read read the contents of a file from our current file system and display the uh, display the contents within our application. So here I have a basic Towery application that's been scaffolded with uh, scaffolded with uh, with Vue.js, um, but really nothing else has been done. It's following exactly the same uh, the exact same setup that we had done uh, in the previous video. If you don't know how to set up a Towery application, uh, I'll post a card uh, at this time where you can uh, follow that back to uh, basically just getting started. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I don't need really any of this. I don't need any of this, uh, this boilerplate code that uh, the view template provides. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete some of this. And then all I want for now is a button. It says open file explorer. So now if I come back to my if I come to my split uh, terminal here, I can go ahead and fire up my dev server. Uh, you should remember how to do that from the previous video. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and fire up the Towery server so that our application will spin up. And as you can see, we don't have any of the contents that we had before. We just have this button that's literally doing nothing. So what we want to do from here is we want to go ahead and we want to install uh, the Towery package. So we're going to do p pnpmi. If you're using npm, that's fine. Yarn, uh, you can use any of them. I'm just using pnpm as a as my preference. Uh, and then we're going to install Towery apps, uh, Towery dash apps slash API. Now what this is going to do is this is going to provide us uh, the ability to hook into our Towery application from our client side code. Uh, without having to really write any of uh, write anything within our main uh, our main Rust file here, uh, reserving this for more complicated uh, processes that we want to uh, want to do in the future. Uh, and I'll leave I'll leave some documentation uh, down in the description of this video where you can actually look through the uh, the Towery API docs and see what all th this package actually provides, um, as well as some other things that we'll get into in, in, uh, in just a little bit. But now what we're going to do is we're going to, now that we've gone ahead and we've gotten that installed, we are going to first import open from at towery app slash API slash dialog. So what this is, so now we are saying we want to have the open dialog. Um, there are several different types of dialogs, uh, open, message, ask, uh, all of which are uh, system level dialog boxes um, that, that they are giving us an API that we can actually utilize here in our client side code. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to say const, so, uh, we're gonna say read, uh, we're gonna say read file contents equals, it's gonna be a function. I'm going to go ahead and pass this as a click event to read to our button. So now we have that. And then we are going to, I'm going to first have a try catch 
where I console error just in case something goes awry whenever we uh, whenever we try to read this in, uh, whenever we try to do anything with our uh, with our Towery APIs, uh, just in case we want to you know we want to catch that and not blow up the application. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and say const selected path, and you'll understand why I say that in just a second. Open. And you'll be able to look in the documentation when I, uh, once you, once you uh, are done watching this video, you'll be able to go, um, you'll be able to go and look at the documentation for open. Um, and something I'm going to uh, make note of here is this is actually returning a promise. So something that we'll need to do to our function is we need to change this to an async function and then await. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But uh, you'll be able to look and see what all of this makes available. Um, you can set a default path, a directory, uh, types of types of file filters. So I uh, so I'll I'll probably cover that in another video on how we can uh, we can set up filters for for this. Um, you can tell it whether or not you want to allow multiple. In our case, I'm going to just say false, and I'll talk about that in just a bit as to why I'm, I'm actually um, kind of being verbose with that. Um, you, can give, you can give it a title. Um, so here we could say open uh, text file. And we'll see that in a second. Um, so now let's talk about why this is actually a promise. So if you think about it, we, we don't want this to run uh, we, we don't want to execute any of the code here down he, down here um, before our dialog box closes. And so that said, this is returning a promise because it, it's going to actually say, let's wait for the dialog box to close before we perform any actions. So that's why this is promise. Uh, this is uh, returning a promise. That's why this is an async function. So let's go ahead and we're just going to console log uh, this, this selected path variable here. Um, I, so let's go ahead and come back to our application. Go ahead and go to the console and click Open File Explorer. And there we go. So now we have the File Explorer. So if we select, I'm going to select this ASCII art text file and open. And you'll see it doesn't return the contents. It only returns the file location. And so that said, we are now, uh, we now have the, uh, now that we have the ability, so now that we have the ability to, uh, to get the path, we also need to read the file, we need to read that file. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, I'm gonna just copy this and we're going to say read text file. And then from here, we are going to do this from the FS, uh, FS package within, uh, within Towery. And what this will do is this will actually read in a file as a UTF-8 string. So let's go ahead and say const, we're actually not going to say const here. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to say const content uh, equals ref. We're going to pull ref in from view. And we're going to make that an empty string. The next thing that I want to do here is I want to add a paragraph tag where we try to render contents, but I only want to render it if it has some sort of length. There we go. And so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say contents.value equals read text, oh, we gotta await read text file and then we're going to we're going to send selected path. All right, so you you'll see that we're we're getting an error here in TypeScript, and it's saying argument of type string, string array, or null 
is not assignable to parameter of type string. So read text file is actually, it's expecting one single file path. And as noted before, uh, open can pull in multiple file paths. So in this case, uh, for our use case here, um, we want to make sure that we are only getting one. And that's why I actually am very verbose about whenever I'm saying I only want the one. Um, something I will say is I wish this was able to change based on uh, what I pass as this. So if this is multiple, then this would be smart enough to know like it's only going to return a single string. Um, but what about this null? Why am I also able to return? Why, why am I also seeing this null here? So before I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to console.log selected path again. And we're going to come back to the application. I'm going to open up the dev tools here. And then what happens if I cancel? Oh, there's that null. So if I cancel, I click out of the term, out of the uh, out of the window for some reason, and I just close, you know, I close it. Uh, that's what this does. It returns null. So in order to handle that, uh, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to say if not selected path, then we're just going to return. Hmm. And then we'll go ahead and we will put this back. Now this still leaves us with the string and string as an array, um, but because we have we have manually specified this as multiple false, I'm going to go ahead and say it's safe to assume that this is actually a string. So now let's go ahead and come back to our application. Let's go ahead and open File Explorer, ASCII art. You can see the contents of that file. Open. And there it is. All of our ASCII art has been put in the application. You can't exactly tell what it is. It's just due to formatting. But um, that said, that is how you read a file in. Uh, that's how you read a file into a Towery application um, utilizing all of the Towery, uh, exposed Towery APIs from their, their API package. Now there's something else that I wanted to bring up in this video. I'm not going to dive too deep into it because we'll likely look into, uh, into security more in another video. But something really cool about Towery is that they, uh, that they are very security focused. Um, I will leave a link in the description as well to their documentation on security and all things that you need to consider whenever you're writing your application. But uh, I wanted to look at this whitelist. So this whitelist here is what uh, controls what APIs are exposed, what, um, what we have access to, and how you control um, what the application can actually do. So right now, by default, just uh, for development purposes, uh, I, I do wish that there was some sort of comment saying, like, turn this off for production. But that said, um, everything is turned on right now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we are going to come back to our application and start it. Uh, you'll likely need to restart the application. It, I don't know if that's a bug or if uh, something that's something that they're working on or what's going on. But uh, every time you change that config, uh, it's not very good about picking it up. So. I, I would just recommend going ahead and restarting uh, the application. So now if I go ahead and I click Open File Explorer, you'll notice it says the dialog module is not enabled. You must enable one of its APIs in the allow list. So right now we are not able to actually utilize our open function because we have it turned off in the allow list. So let's go back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dialog. And here I'm actually going to say save is true. And you'll notice I'm saying save and not open. I'm doing this on purpose. Uh, you'll notice that it's trying to rebuild. Uh, we're going to try it really quick. So if I try to open, it's still saying dialog open is 
uh, you'll notice it's saying dialog open is not in the allow list, but it is uh, actually proving me wrong. So maybe I was doing something wrong in the past where, um, but it, it does seem to have uh, hot reloaded. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, Towery once again proving how, how awesome it is. Um, so yeah, so let's jump back to our config here and change this to open true you'll notice that it did not actually, uh, it didn't work, right? Because we specified the save, the save dialog, not the open dialog. So very granular on their part. Uh, really like to see, really like to see that. Um, so now I can actually open. Um, I cancel, it doesn't do anything. But now if I go ahead and click ASCII art, I am able to do everything, but the FS module is not enabled, right? So we are, hint, we are not able to move forward until we actually add that to the allow list. So let's go ahead and come back. We are going to say fs. We are going to say read file and set that to true. It's going to kill the application and restart. We will open file explorer, ASCII art, open, and now it works. So that's really cool. Um, what I will mention is um, they provide so much more control than what we are actually looking at right now. Um, they, they do allow you to say, I only want you to be able to read from this specific directory um, and I only want the application to have control of these specific directories and nothing else. It's, it's really, really granular. Uh, and, but we're not going to take a look at that in this video. We'll take a look at that um, maybe in future videos. Um, but I will leave links in the description below, so definitely check all of those out. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If there's anything that I can do in, in these videos um, to help, help, you, uh, help you understand better, anything I can do uh, to make these videos better, of course, leave them as comments down below. But uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe. Uh, if you do leave a thumbs down, don't forget to leave comments letting me know what, what you would like to see. Um, yeah, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.